Hello, um, welcome to the KVM keynote as part of the KVM forum. Um, my name is Christian Bontrager and I work for IBM as Chief Product Owner for Linux and KVM on IBM Z, as well as the S390 maintainer for KVM. As usual, the um, keynote is more of a status report with numbers, facts, and recaps of the last year, as well as an outlook, uh, where do we stand? Um, as of today, um, Paolo Banzini is still the core maintainer for KVM as in the last years, but um, we also have a lot of uh, architectural maintainers for ARM, x86, S390, Power, uh, and uh, MIPS. In the last time, we even got an increased number of, of reviews for different architectures. Uh, so this is actually a quite good thing because that um, helps to, to um, put some burden away from maintainers. And on the architecture side, there have been some interesting changes. For example, on, on ARM, um, the 32-bit host support was removed. And MIPS has seen a maintainer change uh, after it was uh, being unmaintained for a short period of time. Um, last year, we already talked about RISC-V and we expected it to have uh, the RISC-V architecture as part of, of KVM um, today but um, we're still waiting for architecture finalization as the uh, RISC-V kernel maintainers have pretty strict rules on uh, when to merge uh, code. Um, they um, want to have the architecture settled and finalized. Um, so much for the architectures. Uh, let's have a look what are the trends in KVM in general. And uh, I see about five big areas of interest. First is certainly cloud. And looking back at previous KVM forums and, and this forum as well, um, apart from Microsoft Azure, everybody is using KVM. We have Amazon, Google, IBM, Alibaba, Huawei, Tencent Cloud, ByteDance, Yandex, Oracle, and many, many more. And we do see KVM in, in different variants from highly customized stacks uh, like Amazon Nitro, Firecracker, or Google Cloud. Um, or we do see KVM used in a pretty standard uh, software stack based on KMU. And this is actually a strength of, of KVM. KVM can be used as a building block for a lot of features. We also see that in the container space. Uh, for example, uh, with Kubernetes, um, we have actually an, an orchestrator that manages containers, but with kubevert, um, we can use that to orchestrate KVM uh, virtual machines. Or with Kata containers, we can use KVM to isolate containers. Um, but the biggest topic um, for KVM at the moment is certainly trusted computing. In the past, we already had enclaves like SGX, and this is now being complemented and uh, kind of replaced here and there by <clears throat> secure virtual machines. And uh, I will come to that topic uh, later on multiple times. Another topic is certainly um, IO. And hardware pass-through is still a very, uh, very hot topic, as well as the O enhancements. But last but not least, um, we have uh, changes in testing. Um, so this brings the question, um, is KVM stabilizing or moving even faster? And when you look at the KVM commits uh, over the, the kernel releases over the last years, you can see that the KVM rate is, is growing. And in fact, um, th this trend uh, looks like uh, it is accelerating. So the speed has kind of increased and, and not being reduced. It might be due to some bigger things like secure execution, AMD, SEV, but it could also be uh, that KVM is really um, more and more actively used in, in several places and it's just lots of small things. Um, so let's have a look at some more statistics. Um, I counted here the numbers of, of commits in, in the last year, um, basically from kernel version 5.4 till 5.9. And uh, I also put, put the numbers of last year. And roughly speaking, we have about 40% more commits uh, and merges than last year. Um, when we then look at the, the reviewed by, or the, the commits that have a reviewed by tag, uh, we have a much a better ratio. We have 80% increase. Um, and at the same time, we have less changes with the fixes uh, or less growth in, in the number of, of commits which have a fixes or CC stable tag. 
uh, hopefully this indicates a better quality um, and uh, that would be good for everyone. Um, we should also pause to, to celebrate a bit to some people here that did an outstanding job in KVM. Uh, first of all, um, the authors with the most number of commits. We have, um, I'll just mention the, the first three, uh, Sean Christopherson, Paolo Bonsini, and Marc Sangier. Um, these people um, really uh, drive a lot of changes into KVM. Um, but at the same time, it's also important to have people that, that do reviews, uh, do uh, the, the quality check. And uh, here the top reviewers are Vitaly Kuznetsov, Cornelia Hook, and Jim Madsen. Um, last but not least, we also have uh, people that, that um, fixes bugs and uh, fixes regressions. And um, these people are um, almost the same as, as the authors. Uh, so we have Sean Christopherson, Paolo Bonsini, and Marc Sangier. So we have um, seen people working on KVM. What are the companies that do the KVM work? Um, similar to, to last year, we have more than 20 companies working on KVM. And um, also the, the companies are kind of similar with small shifts here and there. And um, if you look closely, you see that we have one, one name here. Um, and that's because Mark did uh, used to work for Amazon and now works for Google. So um, it was not that easy to, to separate the, the, the employer here. Uh, you can do your, your own math if you like. Uh, but what do we see here is uh, that we have, uh, of course, cloud providers, the people that use KVM actively participate in the development. We have the distribution, so Red Hat, uh, SUSE, Canonical, um, and of course, the, the chip vendors like AMD, Intel, IBM, ARM, they all participate in KVM. So now let's have a look into what are these companies working on. And um, I want to talk about one thing that I find um, very important, and that's testing. Um, we have seen a lot of improvements over the past years here. Um, we have two kind of or two frameworks for KVM. The first framework is KVM unit test. This is a separate repository. And then we have the KVM self-test, which is co-bundled with the Linux kernel. And uh, we have seen uh, an increase in number of self-tests. We have seen an increase in number of KVM unit tests. And a KVM unit test is now actually also able to test non-KVM hypervisors. So this project has, has grown out of its, its initial, initial um, idea and it was rehosted also in GitLab. So we have now CI support and other nice things. So this is really something where we have invested a lot in the past. When we talk about highlights overall, um, I have to mention trusted computing. I did it before. Um, I have to mention it here as well. Um, also, uh, this is not common code or not at all. Um, so all the trusted computing implementations are actually per architecture and not yet uh, common. Um, when you look at the right-hand side, the top right-hand side, um, this, this graph shows the number of commits over the, the kernel versions. It's basically the same number that you have seen before. And the, the red color indicates the number of commits that cannot be attributed to any architecture. So common code kind of. And uh, this uh, is about things like KVM stuff. If you remember my, my talk last year, about performance data, I complained that we have a lot of data that can't be used by, by tooling. Um, we do ship a tool in KVM called KVM Start, and that tool now um, can do logging and uh, uh, comma separated values. Um, and if you remember my talk from two years ago, I complained about that we do not have enough uh, code that runs cross architecture. And um, we now have a unified shadow MAU cache data structure across architecture, and certainly lots of cleanups and fixes. The biggest architecture is certainly x86. Uh, again, the red, red bar shows the number of x86 patches. Um, we have too many things to mention for x86. Uh, so I can just mention some uh, bigger blocks or some specific features. So for example, the asynchronous page fault handling was reworked. The dirty bitmap, which is used for live migration, was, was optimized. We have 
done a lot of refactoring and optimization in a lot of places. You can read them here. I'm not going to read it out loud. Um, several works in, in the Spectre-like area, so the, the hardware um, uh, side channel attacks. Nested KVM was improved a lot. Uh, we have seen improvements in the AMD SEV, the Trusted Computing Variant from AMD. And of course, we have also seen performance work, work for, for example, we have a fast pass for IPI and um, TSC deadline timers. Another big architecture is ARM. Um, and ARM, um, as I mentioned, uh, removed the 32-bit host support. And that actually indicates that ARM is, is getting larger, bigger, and more important in the server space as well, while the, the small embedded part is less and less important, I guess. It's still important, but here for KVM, it's really the server part. Uh, that, of course, also created a lot of cleanups, things that we could remove. But what else do we have in, in the ARM space? Of course, um, the usual interrupt controller work that we have seen for ARM uh, in the last years. Um, also work for the virtualization host extension. Um, the hypervisor uh, that there runs directly in EO2 mode. And it's actually a different way of doing things. So the code was, was split between the VHE and, and NVHE mode. We also got features like steal time, point authentication for uh, NVHE, data report, report, uh, report and injection, as well as level-based TLB emulation. So lots of small things, lots of, of changes. On the MIPS side, we basically only have uh, the Longson support, which is a new ch chip from China. Um, while this is uh, only a small change, it actually helped to to get new maintainer, maintainers on board for, for MIPS. So Hua Kai Chen uh, stepped up to be a maintainer as well, uh, together with Alexander Markovic, which means that MIPS is now uh, maintained again, which is good. On the um, power side, again, trusted computing. We have seen the PowerPC uh, secure guest support. Um, of course, we also have seen the new Power 10 uh, support preliminary. Um, and several other small improvements like more than 4,000 guests for HV KVM, interrupt handling, signal stepping, and so on. On the S390 side, again, trusted computing. Um, we have uh, something called secure execution, which is the S390 variant of that. Um, but we have invested also in testing, self-test, a lot of KVM unit tests, um, yield improvement, again, nested KVM, and also, um, some kind of small hygiene work that, for example, we implemented Diagnose 318, which is a firmware interface that we can now also uh, use in KVM. So uh, this is certainly uh, something where every architecture uh, that we have seen is, of course, doing ho their homework in terms of fixes and maintenance. When you look forward, um, all these, these features that I mentioned here are uh, until uh, kernel version 5.9. Uh, but looking beyond that, I mean, um, 5.9 was, was released um, two weeks ago. And um, for x86, we get a new MMU for two-dimensional paging uh, pretty soon. We certainly will see enhancement in the trusted computing world. So AMD SEV has uh, enhancement for secure state or secureness and paging. ARM is working on protected KVM. Um, Intel has something um, called TDX, and you can bet that uh, IBM will also give you uh, additional features for power and SU90 in that realm. And hopefully, we will also get uh, RISC V support soon. Okay, um, with that, thank you for your attention. Uh, for questions and comments, feel free to write me or the KVM program committee for questions regarding the KVM forum itself. And with that, enjoy the rest of KVM forum.